Hold the Billah Min Shaitan Rajim Bismillah Rahman Rahim. And we are going to start chapter 41 tonight, inshallah, and elucidate it. And uh, we're going to read 27 verses tonight, inshallah. Okay. Here you go, Mona, please. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Ha Min. A revelation from the All Gracious, the All Merciful, a scripture with elucidated signs, an Arabic Quran for the people who are knowledgeable. It is a bearer of good news as well as a warner, but most of them turn away, therefore they will not hear. And they said, Our hearts are completely shielded from what you are inviting us, and there is deafness in our ears. And there is a barrier between you, between us and you. Therefore, do whatever you do, and so will we. Say, I am no more than a human being like you, who has been inspired that indeed your, your God is one God. Therefore, you shall stand firm for him and ask forgiveness for him, from him. And woe to those who set up partners for God. Those who do not give the cleansing charity, and they are dis- disbelievers in the hereafter. Indeed, as for those who are faithful and lead a righteous life, reserved for them is a well-deserved recompense. Say, are you having no faith in the one who created the matter in two days, and are you setting up likenesses for him? Such is the Lord of the multiverse. And he placed therein stabilizers and blessed it and exactly designed its interactions in four days to equal the needs of those who seek it. Then he balanced the vacuum and it was a smoke. He then said to it and to matter, come into existence willingly or unwillingly. They said, we come willingly. He then completed them as seven vacua in two days and he inspired in each vacuum its law. And we adorned the lowest vacuum with lamps and placed therein guards. Such is the design of the Almighty, the All-Knowing. However, if they turn away, then say, I warn you of a lightning like the lightning that struck Odd and Thamud. When their messengers went to them in succession, proclaiming not to worship except God, they said, had our Lord willed, he would have certainly sent angels. Therefore, we disbelieve in your message. As for odd, they sought greatness on the land, disregarding the truth, and said, who is more powerful than us? Did they not realize that God who created them is more powerful than them? And they continued to dispute our signs. We would therefore sent upon them a violent wind during a few miserable days in order to let them taste the humiliate, humiliation of this world and the humiliation of the hereafter is far worse and they will never be helped. As for the mood, we guided them, but they loved blindness instead of guidance. Therefore, the lightning struck them. What a horrible suffering because of what they earned. And we saved those who had attained faith and were God-fearing. And the day will come when we summon God's enemies to hell forcibly. When they all get there, their ears, their eyes, and their skin will testify against them regarding everything they have done. And they say to their skin, why did you testify against us? They respond, God made us speak. He is the one who makes everything speak, and he has created you in the first place, and to him is your final destiny. And you could never hide from the testimony of your own eyes, ears, eyes, and skin against you. However, you thought that God is unaware of many things you do. And such thinking about your Lord caused you to deviate, and you ended up amongst the losers. Therefore, no matter how long they last, hell will eventually be their abode. 
And if they make up excuses, they will not be excused. And we appoint companions who adorn everything for them continuously. And the truth was thus fulfilled for communities of gents and humans before them, who were also indeed losers. And those who had no faith said, Do not listen to this Quran and distort it that you may prevail. Therefore, we let those who have no faith taste the ultimate suffering and we will requite them exactly for what they did. Okay. Thank you. Halfway through this uh, chapter. Um, okay. Are there any questions, any comments, any observations? Uh, any discussions? Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Fazli. This is Anwar. Yes, Anwar. Assalamu alaikum. Go ahead, please. Yes. Uh, from uh, verses uh, 14 onwards, yes, up to 17 or 8, it seems that it's a it's a complete repetition of the attitude of people when mm-hmm. messengers of God come with proof. And, yes. and, and, and show them the reality of things. And yet, the, the, despite the signs that God sends and continues to send up to now, people just don't pay any attention or they don't even have the least consideration, for example, for what the signs are telling. You know, this morning... Uh, when was it? Yeah, you in in your khutbah you were talking about uh, how the, you were reading those verses where the whole land with the blessed water that God sends, how the yeah. whole landscape is is resurrected. Uh-huh. A few months ago, when I looked out of my window, all these trees were bare and it looked like they were dead, and yet today when I look out. To the same trees, they're all green and a different shade of green, different sizes, different uh, different shapes of trees, and it's so beautiful, Alhamdulillah. And and it is a fact that we we pass by these signs of God and we take it for granted. But that was a great reminder to us all. Thank you so much for that. Thank sir. you. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Amazing. Yes. That's all I wanted to point out. Very good, um, very good. Thank you so much. Thank yeah, you so much. Anything else? Assalamu uh, alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam, uh, Mahmoud. Go ahead, please. Yes. On uh, the beginning, uh, one, two, three, four, those, uh, mm-hmm. especially two and three and four, you, you see that the Quran came from Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim. Yep. And then it says, uh, Kitab or scripture, the was uh, elucidated sign. Yep, yep. And uh, you know, verse uh, four, it says, Bashir on Nadira. Yes. Yeah, bearer of good news as well as a warner. And this actually is used for the messenger as well. Yep, yep. Same exact words that use. Uh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And the messenger. So you know, those who gravitate towards the human, idolize and the human. You should know what they have is what is in here, and God gave that same attribute to the Quran. So the yep. good news and the one. Is the Quran? You will find the message from the Quran. Exactly. Yes. When where else?
Indeed, yes. Yeah. Very good, very good. Malik was salam. Very good. Anything else? Well, I mean, you know, these six and on, it just, you know, I say I'm no more, no more than a human being like you and uh, who has been inspired that indeed your God is one God. Therefore, you shall stand firm for him and ask forgiveness from him. And woe to those who set up partners for God. And so that is, that is the message that continuously is, is repeated in the Quran. And again, as I was talking about it today, this is a waste of life in this world. Those who do not give the cleansing charity and their disbelievers in the hereafter. They just don't care. Okay? So all for them is just this worldly life and its vanities. And so that's... And then, and then here it says, as, as for those who are faithful and lead a righteous life, and this is repeated over and over in the Quran, so that is, should be the model for us, that we should lead a righteous life, that we cannot waste our life that God has given us as a gift. If we do that, then we are going to suffer. And that life with that kind of, um, you know, action that you go through that's, one after another, we act against God's commandments and against his instructions and against his will. And uh, so we're never going to succeed that way. So that's a waste of life. Whatever it is, 50, 60, 70, 80, whatever it is, it's complete waste, total waste. And God warns us about that. I just want to make this comment here about this, this uh, verses 9 through um, 12, okay? Four verses here. And this is, I just, I just want, it's more than I have, it's uh, five verses, I think, four verses or five verses. But anyway, um, say, are you having no faith in the one who created the matter in two days? And are you setting up likenesses for him? Such is the Lord of Multiverse. Um, I want to make this point. This is the Quranic cosmology. Okay? This doesn't look like the Big Bang cosmology. This does not look like all of these stuff that, that you're, you know, reading on books in books or something like that. It's going to be obsolete in, in a few years. This is a completely different cosmology that God is describing here. Okay. So, again, we have to we have to pay attention to this. That this God is saying that He says here that, and then He balanced the vacuum, and it was a smoke. He then said to it and to matter, come into existence, willingly or unwillingly. They said, we come willingly. This is what I'm talking about when I talk about the collective consciousness, okay? That they have a consciousness and they are speaking to their creator. That's what they are doing, okay? God is saying, come into existence, willing or unwilling, you have to do it, okay? But they said, we come willingly. They completely at peace with the way that God has created them and wanted them to come into existence. This existence is basically is a genesis. This is not a conservation law. Okay? And I showed those pictures and everything that now we are taking with this web telescope and all kinds of stuff. And, and those are the pictures that are basically rejecting all of these theories that we have about how the cosmos actually starts. Because the reason behind that is because we are relying on mathematical equations. Mathematical equations are not sufficient 
to fix the problems of creation. See, this has to be transmitted to all of us. Okay? You should understand it. Okay? Then God says he then completed them at seven vacuum in two days. Okay? And he inspired in each vacuum its law. The laws are different. The law that works in the lowest vacuum, which is our uh, universe, is different from the law of the second level, level, or second layer, or the third layer, or the fourth layer. They're all different laws. That's what God says. And we adorn the lowest vacuum with lamps. Okay? This is when the stars came into existence in this lowest universe. Now, asking what is in the other layers, I have no idea. And it's none of my business. It's God's business. Okay? It's not going to affect me. Okay? So this is, this is what, this is what, it should be our attitude this way. Okay? Not try to justify this with the Big Bang Theory or this and that, the others. Those theories are for, for those people who are thinking of those things, let them do that. This is the Quranic cosmology. Okay. And we place it in God, such is the design of the Almighty, the All-Knowing. But my point is that if you read this carefully, okay, then God says here, it's in verse 10, and he placed the ring stabilizers and blessed it and exactly designed its interactions in four days. This is what matters. Okay, matter has its own interactions. Okay, he says, fear akwataha, means his forces. Okay, there is a cohesiveness in matter, and that's what God is describing here for us. Okay, so he designed all of this, and they were all inspired into these creation that God had, and again, they all had consciousness. And that consciousness that I talked about it over and over the past year or so, uh, this collective consciousness, and that's what actually they are talking to God here. He balanced the vacuum and it was a smoke. He then said to it and to matter, come into existence, willingly or unwillingly. They said we come willingly. And let me also tell you this. This smoke that's mentioned here, okay, ah, the smoke, come on, okay, very good. This smoke is not this smoke that I'm showing in my my picture here, okay, on my screen. These are the web telescope, and that's the, on the top is the, is the other telescope. This is matter down here. This is matter. This is not that smoke that God is talking about. So don't be confused with that, okay? As soon as people say, oh, yeah, you see, yeah, we saw that smoke. No, that's not the smoke. This is, these are matter. This is matter that God created. They have interactions. And God designed those interactions. And so this smoke is not the same as what God is saying there. And so we have to be careful with those things, okay? This is, this is beyond our understanding. We don't understand this. And we never may, be, may, we never may not be understanding this uh, fully in our lifetime. But there's always time and God is, when the time comes, God is going to show us. Okay. We were eliminated from the creation. That's what God says. I've not allowed them to witness their own creation or the creation of the vacuum and matter. We were eliminated. Okay. We were not worthy of that. Okay. And God said he's not of, he is of no help to those kind of people. So, um, 
we have to we have to pay attention to the Quranic verses, which is very important, as I said, and then accordingly, then we can make up our mind and and see and compare that with the you know with the uh, evening program called Cosmos and this and that and the others. Okay, those are fun to watch sometimes, but those are based on mathematical equations. And as I said, and I'm going to say it again, okay, uh, I get a lot of feedback from a lot, from a lot of people, and I wish that I could, I could actually make people understand this, okay, that what I'm showing to you is not a joke, okay. This cannot be toyed with. Uh, so we have to be very careful with this. This actually shows a a very small window to a universe which does not work based on mathematical equations. Because those prime numbers and their indices, they have no equation that can describe those. The relation cannot be described. So God is showing us that kind of universe. And we know that it's a beautiful universe. It actually has a generative power to it. And that's how it generates this, how it generates cross-section, how it generates all of these other things. But they are not based on mathematical equations. And so we have to understand, and I, I wish that I could actually transmit this idea that I have to you. And all of it is coming from the Quran. It's not coming from any place else. Okay, so this, these few verses here that we just read, these are the Quranic cosmology, and that's the true cosmology. Okay. Okay, very good. Uh, are there any comments, any questions, any observations? Peace. Salaam alaikum, Dr. Fosley. Welcome, Salaam Fariel. Yes, go ahead, please. Um, you know... I um I'm I'm listening to you especially today where when God explains things and we're not ready to hear them or we we're, we're so hooked upon the way we used to read and absorb things that is it's different now and yeah. um one of the things you said today was a uh, was back 2 weeks ago when I had totally misunderstood when you said what Jesus said was that the um, that what we get for our, our tra- sin is you know is death you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, wages wages of sin is death yes yes so yeah. I didn't get a chance last week to come back with another argument which is what it was um, God did you say when he uh, shut your mouth and don't let the words come out and he and he covers you from not being stupid um that today your explanation was timeless because i didn't think of jesus or anybody or any of his messengers of understanding when he said the wages of sin is death that it was after we die now not before we even got here so he was giving us the information that why we're here is because we sinned. And I was yep. thinking that the reason we are going to die now is because we sinned. And it makes a difference that before and after or taking it out of a time sequence. Yeah. Yep. And, and that's what you did that made me understand finally what, you were talking about and what to expect in death to the larger degree. The other thing was in reading the book, yet last night I read the cave and all I wanted to know was, well, what happened to the man that was the boy that was with was with Moses when he was walking? And that wasn't even, a, a, it, like you said, it had nothing to do with me. It wasn't my business, but I was hung up on that. I wasn't hung up on the message that you can't afford to be with me because you hooked up on what you're thinking and you're not really getting the point that God is making. And yep, so yep. It felt like I felt like almost like David, you know, where he he used his logic, but 
our logic and reasoning is nothing to do with God's logic and reasoning, and it's hard to let it go because we have our ego. Yep, so yep. today when you did that, it, it, took, it took that reading last night, me not being able to, silencing me last week and hearing you the week before and today brought me somewhere where I can't even tell you where I am, but I, it, 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 it's, <laughs> I'm so overwhelmed by just the mercy and grace of God that he teaches this Quran to those Mashallah. who want it. And yeah, yeah. And As I said, we are absolutely blessed and honored, okay, all of us. And it's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It is. I, I, could, I could just, if you could see my body bending down, something in me is uh-huh. prostrating. You know, physically I'm not. It's, it's a lot. And I can't. That's it. That's it. Thank you. Very good. Very good for you. Mashallah. Very good. Okay, anything else? Assalamu uh, alaikum, Rab. And, uh, to add a little bit more to, to what Freyla was just saying in your uh, uh, prayer today in the Juma, the wage of sin is death. Yeah. But if we, if we look also in chapter 8, verse 24, mm-hmm. and it states that shall uh, respond to God and to the messenger when he calls you what gives I'm just part of this and I don't have it with me here but what gives you life mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah and he calls you what gives you life so the message is when we accept, as you were saying today in the, in the German, yep. Yep. It, 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 it takes us back to God, mm-hmm. which is the real life. And that's yep. what the message is, will give us life. And we become a living yep. when we uphold that message that God is describing in chapter 8, verse 24. This one to yep. that. I have it on my I have it on my screen right now. Yeah, and so everybody can see it. Yeah, you're right. It's right over here. It says yeah. the towards towards the very thing that gives you life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah. And right here, where is, yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. This is. I mean, just think know, about it. it. Yeah, I mean, you, but you look at you look at that that verse in, in chapter chapter sixty seven verse two, and God mm. is saying He says, "Allah al mauta wal hayat." Okay, and the interesting thing about that verse is that death was created first and then life. Okay, mm. and as I said, death is a very scary state of existence. Okay, because that is not a um, an attribute of God. Okay, so so when we when we read that, given life after death is nothing but an absolute generosity and magnanimity of God. Okay, that somebody who has sinned has been put to death, which means that he has paid the wages for that sin. Okay, and now God is granting life to this person again. And this is, as I said, this is absolute love, generosity, and kindness, and mercy, and and grace. And I, I just don't have any words to describe it. And that's the amazing thing. Um, yeah. My son. Yeah. You know, those who do, do not know God, they, they, they don't know who they are. They are not alive. Yeah. Yep. Knowing knowing God is what life is. When you connect God, when you connect your yourself to God, you become a living. Become you living. know, forty eleven. We, we read it last week. Okay, they said, "Our Lord, you have given us two deaths and two lives. 
We yeah. now confess our sins. Is there any way out? Okay, remember that? This verse? Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we read this in chapter 40. And, and this is amazing, okay? And, and now they say two deaths and two lives. And they, they are also doing it in the correct order, okay? And, and so the death that we were, we were dead before God granted us this worldly life, okay? And then, and then God is putting, uh, these, are the, these are the sinners. God is putting them back to death because the wages of sin is they gain death. But the righteous uh-huh. people do not go through the second death. And that's what God describes in the Quran. He says that they are not going to do that. The only death that they're going to remember is that first death. Okay. And that also is supported by chapter 16, yeah. when the yeah. angels put the righteous to death, they say, yeah. Salaamu Alaikum. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, yeah. Yes. Alright. Alaikum Salaam. Okay, any other comments, any questions, any observations? Anything? Salam, Dr. Fazli. Welcome, Salam. Yes, uh, go ahead, please, uh, Maria. Yeah, I, I, I just want, wanted to continue on what you just said uh, uh, about the meaning of uh, this, this, this life after death. Uh, but mm-hmm. what, what put us in a state of living, uh, I would say, uh, instead of the state of death, as you said, it's a scary <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, uh, status. Is, um, it's interesting because uh, as I was researching more about the meaning and stuff, in, in verse 16.97, basically what keeps us in that life status, if I can say, if I can say that, is the uh, is is if we are a, a mu'min, uh, so we believe believer, um, and if and actually it's a very good news in in chapter sixteen verse ninety seven, uh, it, it applies to men and women. I mean to to male and yes. females, but yes. also who reforms, who does uh, salih a uh, salihin. So yes. it looks like the faith and. Uh, uh, continuously reforming, which means doing righteousness and improving, is what keep, keep us in that state of living. So, and it's scary on the other hand, because if we lose faith and we are not constantly evolving, um, as you said once, I mean, um, God is the expander, things are not static, it keeps changing and evolving. We are basically in a state of... Uh, of death. I mean, uh, that's 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 what I wanted. I mean, by 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 the grace of God, how He explains to us exactly what would allow us to basically avoid the second death, what keep us really alive, and uh, so it's it's the increasing in faith and keeping reforming or doing righteousness that uh, islah. So that's what I wanted. Uh, just to share. Very good, very good. Yes. Yeah. And and yeah. Dr. Fazli, I have a, a, a question if you don't mind. And sure. um, this is regarding uh, your comments in the Friday prayer when you were presenting the the mathematics and again thank you so much. It's really yeah. mind boggling. I mean I can I said it before, I can sometimes even not describe what I the feelings that I go through. But I got a little bit confused by your comment. So, for instance, uh, when you presented that line um, from the, uh, you know, the index of the twin primes and the index of the Gaussian prime and so on and so on. So, that line of 133 from which after that, 
we derive uh, the frequency of noon, we derive the frequency in chapter six, 68, frequency mm -hmm. of uh, Hamim in chapter 44, Hamim in 41, the mean in 43. I get all that. But one comment that you made, and I'm not sure if I understood it, is you said um, uh, like 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 something like no need for us to go and count is this yeah. so yeah. so would you be able to elaborate more on that does it mean that we cannot verify or or is it what, what, what did you mean by that statement thank you well I'm, I'm just I'm just saying that Suppose, suppose you went ahead and, and did something to the Quran. It's, it's ink and paper, okay? Yes. And there are, there are various spellings in existence of the words in the Quran, okay? Like the, the, the text that we have, the Arabic text that we have, has a different spelling with the long ellipse and things like that that does yes. not match with the numbers that we are deriving with this, with this uh, mathematics, Okay? Uh, so that kind of thing, then it will start a huge debate and, and, and argument on different sides that people are trying to, to sort of force upon others the ver veracity of these books, whatever they are. But they have to first... You have to first verify your source. If the source is, cannot be verified, then that source is obsolete. Okay? So, like, for example, from this we figured out that chapter 42, 1 and 2, verse 1 and 2 are supposed to be, are supposed to be, Okay? Mm -hmm. That's what we figured out. This mm -hmm. mathematic actually generates that. It tells us 209, which is number of Ain Sin Qaf, in chapter 42, okay, that one actually lines up with 422. So, and that means 42.2. So that means that Ain Sin Raf is supposed to be in 42.2. So it cannot be in 42.1. So all of those Qur'ans that are in print and they have Hamim Ain Sin Raf in the first verse, they are wrong, okay? Yeah. So uh, I cannot count it from that. It would be useless because the verse structure is wrong. I thought also, Dr. Fazli, that the, and I'm talking about my understanding of it, I may be wrong. I thought the, because I've, I always felt it, um, uh, when I got to understand more and more about all this mathematics of the Quran, I thought in this process, God also is showing us which basically version is is more is correct. Correct. Yes. So, yes. so, and and everything. I mean, yes. and and and, and I, I might be wrong, but the way I understood it, everything is pointing more and more to the half uh, copy. Yes, of or course. Of that. course. Yeah. Right. That's, that's yes. on our website. Actually, you can see it on our website. Okay. Correct. Yes. So, so, so that's so, what I said on the website. I said the so, only difference is that this mathematics generates nine one two seven. Correct. So that's, Correct. That's really the final, yeah. So, so does it mean, does it mean I can, like for instance what you presented today, and I'm just curious, I would like to see if, let's say an example, uh, 166 is the frequency of Hamim in Surah 44, and that doesn't mean I don't trust or anything, but it's just my, um, how can I say, habit to get into verifying. Uh, so, mm -hmm. so, so does it mean that I cannot do that uh, when I look, let's say, at the Habs version? I'm not interested actually in other versions or anything like that. But, um, or, 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 I cannot do that. No, you can go out and count it. There's nothing wrong for, with counting. Okay. Okay. But my point is that Let's assume you didn't have the mathematics that we are, we are all witnessing. You're right. Suppose we didn't have it. Yeah. Then there would be an argument between the guy who was upholding yeah. the Habs version and the other guy. He says, no, mine is right. How right. would you prove it to otherwise? Okay? That's the point. Yeah. 
No, that that I get okay. it, no problem. I okay. wasn't sure about uh, uh, yeah. the comments, so I thought, okay, maybe I'm doing something also. No, 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 you're not doing anything. No, I'm just, I was, what I was saying is that we are not counting from a book, okay? Yes. All right? Yes. We are not counting on a version of the Quran and trying to force that upon people, okay? My argument, again, with these people are that Okay, you're saying that nine has 129 verses. Why don't, you, why don't you go ahead and derive that actually and tell me that this is what this, there's a mathematics which is beyond our imagination, beyond our control, right. and that mathematics actually generates 9,129. Okay? If you cannot do that, then there is no argument. I'm not going to argue with you. It's, it's your problem. You can do whatever you want to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, that's you not. can go ahead and bring the, the story of the camel that was sold to the prophet or the, the horse or whatever, okay? If that is more important to you than these mathematics, then I have no argument with you. I don't want to discuss it. Yeah, okay? we are not validating the mathematics. It's the exactly. other way around. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, that's yeah, uh, and and Doctor Fazli, uh, so like uh, the frequency uh, in each chapter and stuff and stuff. So, are, did did you know them by heart, or or what? What? How did you come quickly to this? That such and such number is the frequency of Hamim, Noon, and stuff in 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 different chapters. Uh, so, so. Well, you mean you mean this one right here, this table that I have here? Right. Uh, uh, no, the uh, the 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 frequencies. The table is good, but the frequency, yeah, that's like this, for example, okay? Well, I mean, this, this comes from these mathematics. I, I don't know anything but it, okay? And it's interesting because it's 44, 150, 16, 166. It tells you even breaks it up into ha and mean, you see? It goes beyond that. And the, the other interesting thing about this is the indices of these composites, 29, 114, 9, 127. How else God is going to tell us? Yeah. But Doctor Fazli, you built this 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 table, the frequency of uh, uh, meme and how you built it, uh, as well as uh, how plus meme. So so yeah. so my my question is, for instance, the hundred fifty. Uh, did you count it, or or you knew no, about? No, 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 because no, because it comes from here. You see, recall that twenty one forty three is six nineteen prime number verse in the Quran. Mm. 619 is the 114 prime number, you see? And 114 composites 150. I have no... It's coming here, okay? okay. Are you getting it from a table or where... No, I'm not getting I'm getting it from this. I'm getting it from what I'm showing to her, okay, from these bullets. Recall that 2143 is the 619 prime okay. number verse. Okay. Okay, in the Quran. Yeah, okay, so 619 is the 114 prime number. These are mathematical facts, Okay. okay. 114 okay. composite is 150. Okay? So, the bud 150 is also the frequency of meme in chapter 44. Okay? Yes. Yes. But that, 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 that frequency of meme in Surah 44, you went in that Surah 44 and you counted or it came from somewhere? I mean, what, what led you to think about chapter... 44 and not something, another chapter. But it comes from these other bullets, you see, here, okay? Mondo, what, what, what is the problem? Hang on a second, Maria. What is the problem? Go ahead and say it loud, Mondo. Okay. No, no, there, there is no problem. No, no. no, no, no. Hey, here, here, I mean, my wife has a question, okay? She's asking, how do you, what are you looking at to know that this thing is the 170th? Thing. You're, she's talking about that table that you have. Okay. All right. Okay. So let me explain it to you. Okay. Here we go. Okay. We'll go at the very beginning again. This is just pure mathematics. Index of a twin prime, 133. Correct. Index of Gaussian prime, 166. Index of prime, 324. Yeah. Twin prime, Gaussian prime, and prime is 2143. Okay. Mm -hmm. 133 is the frequency of noon in Surah 68, okay? 160 is the frequency of Hamim in Chapter 44. 
324 is the frequency of Ha Mim in chapter 41. 324 is also the frequency of Mim in chapter 43. 166 lining up with 324, as you see here. 166 is, is lining up with this guy here. Yes. So it says, as mentioned above, 160 is the frequency of Ha Mim in chapter 44. But 44 is also the frequency of Ha in chapter 43. So, so okay. that's precisely what I, I, I would like to understand, Dr. Fazli. What made you think, uh, how, how it popped up, that 44 is all, a, it, it makes you think of the frequency of Ha in Surah 43. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, uh, the, basically, the, the, trans, the interpretation, if I can say. The, the whole mathematics, I get it, no problem. Is, but is, what I find, I mean, uh, fantastic with you is that then you take those numbers and you say it refers to this and that and this and that. So I was just thinking how you can say it refers to this and that if you did not count them. That's, that's what I'm just trying to oh, do. Oh, I see what you're saying. If I did not count them, how do I know that it refers to that? Right, okay? that's what, exactly. That's yes. what you're asking. Okay, that's yes. what you're asking. That's yes. fine, okay? But I'm just saying that 44 just keeps coming up. I, I have no control over it. Okay. Yeah, no, no, so for example, yeah. yeah. So this this keeps coming back up. But my point is that when you put it all together, then it meshes in. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so you if you if you look at the order of revelations of the order of compilation of the Quran, chapter nineteen happens to be the forty fourth revelation. Yes. Okay. So it's actually connected to to that verse. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, to that chapter, okay, chapter yeah. 44 and chapter, so, like, for example, today I was talking about this, okay, 389 Gaussian prime happened to be 5827, mm -hmm. but 5827 verse in the Quran happens to be 8129. Yeah. This is a Quran, this, that's, okay, this is, this is not counting things, this is just verse numbers, okay, and then, then the last verse in that, but this one here is the 2143rd, this thing, semi-prime. And that's yeah. where you get it here, right over here. Yes. Again. yes. It comes yes. back again. Okay. Yeah. But you see, Dr. Fazli, can you go up a little bit uh, to go back to that uh, line? Uh, the you, you see uh, the the fifty eight twenty seven verse in in the Quran is eighty one twenty nine. This is because you know it. It's in your head. You you you, you, you did go there. You did look for the. Yeah. 5827 yes. verse. Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. Yes. I, yes. I, exactly. Exactly. Yes, I did that. Okay. okay. But okay. now you got you got to now you got to remember that why why I went from 389 389 as you see happens to be the 19th lonely Gaussian composite. Yeah. That's a mathematical fact. Okay. So yeah. God says over this 19. Okay. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, 389 happens to be also an emir. That means yeah. if I write it backwards, I didn't say that today. If I write it backwards, it would be 983. You know what 983 is? 983 is the 114th Chen prime. Yeah. So again, yeah. takes you back to the Quran. Yes, yes. Okay? Yeah. So yeah. I really don't have any chance. I don't have any options because now that it leads me to 114, which is the Quran, yeah. Then I'll say, okay, 389, the Gaussian prime, is this one, and this has to be in the Quran, and it is. 5827 is in the Quran. That's mm -hmm. the verse number from the beginning of the Quran to 8129, and, which is the last verse in Surah 81, and 8129 happens to be, again, 2143, the sin prime, and then it starts this avalanche here that I showed. All right. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay, I, get, I, I, I see now. Thank okay. you so much. Sorry right. for my questions. <laughs> no, 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 that's fine. That's fine. I mean, I'm just saying that, okay, that there are steps that you have to take with mm. all of those steps. Okay, like 150, for example. Okay, well, why are you choosing 150? Okay, 150 is the 114th uh, composite. But you yeah. know what 150 is? It's also a quad prime. It's yeah. 5 times 5, which is 25, times 2 times 3. So it's 6 times 25, which is 150, happens to be the 19th quad prime. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So, 
And then, then you, you look at this, okay, look at it this way. The word Jesus actually has been mentioned once in chapter 19, okay, in verse 34. Yes. Yes. And, and in that chapter, okay, when it's mentioned, it's mentioned actually the, the numerical value of the word Jesus is 150. 50, yeah. yeah that's okay. Like, uh, so, you know, you, then you can, you can see, okay, that, that these numbers now are speaking to you. They're speaking to you in what way, okay? They're speaking to you that says, okay, Jesus was supposed to be mentioned in chapter 19, which is named after his mother, right. okay? And also, also, the fact, the mere fact that is numerical value is 150, Isa is 150, okay? That also symbolizes the fact that it goes back to 114, okay? Yeah. And if you, if you go ahead and, and look at the Quran, that word God, which is mentioned in that chapter, referring to this, is Qala inni Abdullah. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's the 114th verse containing the word Allah, which has been revealed. Yeah. Okay? So you see how it's designed? Yes. yes. But some of these things are built in, like 150 is the 114th composite. Correct. See? Yeah. So when you look at it that way, then you see that all of these things mesh together, and that's the book that we all read and enjoy, hopefully, and uh, yeah. don't get bored. And so. Oh, never, never, because this is not coincidence, yeah. and we do a. Next no, I mean, uh, yeah, as I said, yeah, as I said, that that's 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 how the book is designed based on this mathematics. Actually, we want you to discover further and further, uh, get to know even, I mean, digging even further just to see where it's going to lead us. And, and Dr. Fazli, I just want to say that you do a, an excellent uh, work at connecting the dots. You are very, very strong at that. So, uh, Well, yeah. I mean, you know, God is giving the ability to remember all the numbers, and that's, that's a unique thing that I've oh, had since childhood. So. Yeah. This is something, a gift from God that, you know, that yeah. Uh, yeah. eased it for me, so. It is, indeed. Um, and, and thank you for sharing that with us. Thank that, you. That's the only thing I can do. The only thing I can do is share it with you. And as I said, and, uh, you know, try to tell you what is in the Quran. That's what I'm trying to say, okay? Because I, I hear a lot of stuff, okay? As a matter of fact, I teach these things, okay? Yeah. I teach quantum mechanics. I teach uh, Big Bang cosmology. I teach all of these things that I, you know, I'm basically against it because I know that there is really no basis for that. Okay? So you read a lot of jokes about quantum mechanics and, and people have all kinds of things. And this yeah. guy that I knew that passed away in, in Los Alamos, he was saying that uh, one time he was listening to, to this guy, Friedman Dyson, who was this guy? I don't know if you have heard of Dyson Sphere. Uh, anyway, I think it was at Cornell or someplace like that. And, and he was given a talk, and he was talking about quantum mechanics and different interpretations of quantum mechanics. Mm. And, and then he was, he was a student of his, but they were both older. And so he stood up in the lecture, and he asked him, he said that, well, Dr. Dyson, why didn't you tell us this when you were teaching this class? Yeah. And, and he said, he said, I'm a lot wiser now. <laughs> so, <laughs> he so, has to. so that's the answer. But anyway, you know, at that time when, you know, when, when I was taught quantum mechanics, nobody told me that there, was, there are so many variations and so many interpretations of the, of the quantum mechanics. So what we are actually teaching students, and all these books that are written mostly, are written based on the so-called Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so very interesting. It's uh, but yeah. thank you so much. It's really thank you. It thank makes you. my brain works a lot. <laughs> it's better than uh, chase a game or something. This is truly exactly. Something. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, Doctor yeah. Cousin. Sure. So. No problem. God bless you. <laughs> okay. Anything else?
Okay, if there are no more questions, we'll quit for tonight, and inshallah, we'll hear from you next week then. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and 